Interesting. Do you want me to hit you in the back? No, chop my head off. Oh, fucking... I hear if you drink upside down, make it help me. Oh, I'll just bend you hindi there. Demons be gone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to what is sweeping the nation more so than the Philadelphia Phillies in October, and that is the Safe House. I am your host, professional wrestler extraordinaire, the best professional wrestler you have never heard of, Kirby Mack. And with me tonight, on episode four, Viper, ER, Aiden Chambers, of the Safe House. I bring you, ladies and gentlemen, the new generation ace, Ricky Landell. Now, this is why I feel well, I like all the safe times. You really want to hear that? I'm just curious. You um, never explained it to me. I'm a mark for Denzel Washington, and he's got a movie called The Safe House. All right, heard enough. And then I watched the movie called <laughs> The Safe House, and then I put together, hey, you're safe here. You can say whatever you want. So you try to make it feel that way. No, you know what? <laughs> We're going to have to... Alright, cut. We're going to redo the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, my name... No, I'm just kidding. I bring to you uh, Ricky Lando. And the reason why I feel like this is a real special treat to you guys uh, is because whereas some of the guys that I had on the show before, like uh, Viper or Aiden Chambers, or really even ER for that matter, were still somewhat... Are, are still very hardcore in the business. Aiden Chambers, very hardcore in the business. Viper, very hardcore in the business. ER still puts his toes in the pool from now, from now and then. <laughs> Uh, so, some of the things that they say may be swayed by, you know, the chance of a booking or the chance of uh, some heat with people. But, um, Ricky Landell is far removed from the business at this time. And we'll get into that later on in the show, but I say that this is a real special treat because you're going to hear from a perspective of a guy who really shot to the top very quickly other than getting a contract. I mean, he did everything that there is to do other than working for Vince McMahon. And, uh... It's my understanding, that, and we'll get into this as well, that he actually had an opportunity to do a couple of dark matches, but he chose not to for his reasons, whatever they are, and, and, and we'll get into that. But, you know, so you're talking to a guy who was there, who was on the ride, who had his cup of coffee and then got a big gulp and was about to rise to superstar and decide, you know what, not now. It's not for me. I gotta, I gotta take it out. And I always told you, Ricky, when, when you did that, we've always been really close, and I've always told you that I respected it. I respect you more as a person that you're able to say, you know what, I love wrestling so much, but I, I just got to step away right now. Rather than trying to fool yourselves, and for the most part, I think a lot of the guys, once they get in the business, they stay in the business to fool the other people. No, no, I, I'm not, my passion's not low, I'm not low on passion, no, I'm sure. still here. And uh, I really respect the fact that someone that can walk away from something that they love so much, because I do know... And I know now that you still have a love for it. <clears throat> no, it's hard. It's, it's hard. You know it was hard. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We've talked about that a number of times. Yeah. Um, so, that's called a commercial break. What we're going to do first is, at the top of the safe house like we always do, we're going to touch briefly on who Ricky Landell is, where he came from, how he got into business. Only a couple of minutes because we don't really touch on that because then we're going to dive into <coughs> the fun stuff. So, Ricky, what is it about the wrestling business that drew you to it? Wow. Ah, I mean, I don't know. Like everybody else, I was a kid, I liked wrestling. I mean, how could you not? Especially back in the 80s where just wrestling was going off the wall crazy. I mean, right. It was the biggest thing around. The right. cool thing for, I mean, the thing for me was that at that time, the Fed and, and Vince was blowing up everything, uh, really nationalizing the product. And I actually kind of liked... You used to be able to rent videos. Most people probably didn't even realize this. With What's the video? Yeah, exactly. You used to be able to rent a VHS you know, tape at your local uh, video store, which those don't exist anymore either. VHS, that's what E.T. flew in on? 
Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Something like that. Yeah. Well, so we, you know, you can you, you could go rent these videos. And I used to go to the video store. They had a whole collection of wrestling tapes that you could get. Sure. And they used to have stuff on there that I had no idea what it was. You know, you always knew like uh, Hulk Hogan or or uh, Macho Man, Roddy Piper. Like they were really big names and all, all over the place. Especially because when I was a kid, I was at that time I was living in in upstate New York, so mm -hmm. that area is where you know that stuff really took off. Right. And. Uh, um, um, you know, I used to go to the video store, and they had all these these tapes. I had no idea what they were. They said AWA, and they said NWA on them. They had a guy named Ric Flair, and I had no idea who Ric Flair was. All, all I know is WWE. Yeah, a big, 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 big fat guy with blonde hair named Dusty Rose. I was like, this guy. I mean, this guy doesn't look like Hulk Hogan. Who could he possibly be? Sure. So I'm a little kid. I rent these videotapes. I start to find out that I really like the the old Mid Atlantic, and I like the Midwest tapes uh, a lot better than the the product that Vince was putting out at the time. And uh, that's kind of how I got connected to wrestling. Connected wrestling. So that's what drew you to wrestling. Yeah. Then uh, you started to get older, and uh, I'm not quite sure now. Uh, I'm sure it's no secret, but those that don't know, you were trained by Steve Carino. And in my opinion, and I'm sure in a lot of others, uh, Steve hasn't done much training, especially since uh, you've gotten out of the business. Since for, so it's my understanding that you're, you're Steve Carino's star pupil, or, or at least one of the top three. Yeah, I don't remember him training many people. Right, exactly. Uh, so what? How did that happen? How did that connection happen? Ricky Landell and Steve Carino. Well, so we, I mean, we talked about when I was a kid. I, that's how I got into I got into wrestling. You know, renting videotapes and catching pay per views and seeing stuff that was on television. Right. But uh, at some point in time, I just stopped watching wrestling completely. I just lost interest in it. Sure. I got into my teens and. And I uh, really didn't know what was going on in wrestling. You were didn't. chasing after the uh, little... Yeah, 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 well... Yeah. Murder! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, your your, your interests change and, and you kind of lose lose touch. And I guess, you know, when I lost touch, that was when all the NWO and the big, you know, the big Monday Night Wars were happening. And I didn't okay. know anything about it. So you weren't in on that. You weren't in on the attitude era. I didn't, didn't know anything about okay. it. Um, missed some good times. Yeah, I missed. I missed a lot of times. I mean, uh, but you know, I wasn't there. I wasn't there for it. And uh, um, one day, I had a friend of mine. He 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 was really into wrestling. Somebody I became friends with. It wasn't a, like a long time friend. And uh, he talked about how he used to go to these shows. And I he's talking about how he go to these shows. And he was friends with wrestlers. And I'm like, well, which what shows did you go to? You went to see what WCW? He's like, no, no, these are like independent shows. And I go, I, what is independent? I, yeah, sure. It, 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 Really, most people, and I, you know, yes, most people have no idea funny. what an independent show is. Actually, when I lived in Philly, I was a huge fan of WWF. Uh, I never watched WCW. I was so hardcore WWF. Right. And when I moved down south, that's at the point to me where I started finding out, like, APW. And I was like, what is an independent show? I didn't even know these things existed. It's very hard to understand sure, what, like, yeah. how this made sense. Because in, right. in most people's world, wrestling was either Vince McMahon or it was Ted Turner, WCW, and that was it. Like. Yeah, they would have no idea. So you know, you go around and you see like little placards on windows that say like "Come see Brutus Beefcake" or something. Yeah, Wrestle. Yeah, yeah. Chris Hamlin. Name you never heard. Yeah, right. Chris Hamlin. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's a name you never heard. Yeah. And uh, uh, I want to get in trouble tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris. Yeah, but that's what uh, you know. I had no idea what that was. I had no understanding of what that was. My buddy starts explaining it to me. Talks about it. he's uh, he's buddies with some wrestlers. One of them being Steve Carino. He said you should come to a show. And I was like, well, and I was kind of like hesitant. I was like, ah, eh, that's not something I'm really interested. Well. I ended up going to a show with him, and I was immediately drawn right back now, into wrestling. Now, at this point, at this point, he says, "Hey, I know Steve Carino. I'm buddies with him. Come to a show." I had no idea who Steve Carino was. Steve no, okay. no. Which is which is uh, really uh, actually amazing to me, and you guys will find out why later on, because you and Steve were like you know salt and pepper at one point. Yeah, fast forward. Eight sure. years later or whatever, Steve and I are like, uh, Absolutely. you know, best buds. Like and Marty and Sean before the barbershop window. I mean, that was the hardcore <laughs> yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if I could that far. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if they were really that much friends. Yeah, right, yeah. So. it was all work. It was all work. <laughs> all right, so you go to the show. You're immediately right back into wrestling. Yeah, I was like, I mean, immediately I go to the show. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. We're like, I don't know, what, like 10 feet from the ring? And just these guys are flip-flopping around just... Doing all these things Obviously, that I've never even seen they're before. They're flipping and flopping. They didn't know how to work. Yeah, but you know what's cool <laughs> about it? When I hadn't watched wrestling, show? I hadn't watched wrestling oh, for so long. I just lost the booking. <laughs> yeah, you were gonna get the booking. <laughs> I wasn't gonna get the booking. Come on, yeah. come on, keep yeah, drinking. Yeah, yeah, I'm drinking. All right, so you haven't been to the show in so long. No, but here's the thing. So like, I hadn't been. To, I hadn't known wrestling. Yeah, no rules. 
I hadn't known wrestling, you know, to what it had become. So, like, I remember wrestling, like, the oldest, the lockups, the, the chaining around. You know, all the old stuff from the 80s, that's really where I left off. No, it's like it's like being frozen in time, like a like a, like a de de demolition man or something. Like they freeze in, then they throw you. Then they throw yeah, that's a good good reference, right? Yeah, you know how to use the three shells? <laughs> yeah, well, come on. He doesn't know how to use the three yeah, shells. I'm not a brother. Well, I can understand that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so it's like demolition man. He, cut, he gets he gets put in, and then he gets slot out, and he's in like a different world. And that's kind of how it was for me with wrestling. Sure, I saw all these guys doing like all these moves. I was like. What are these things? These guys are acrobats. This is unbelievable. And you're like right next to it, and they're great. Yeah, yeah. You know, which I thought was I just couldn't believe it. So I was I was pretty much hooked. Uh, I didn't know it yet, but I was hooked at that point. Okay. So we see the show. We're hooked. How do we get into training? Like, what makes you well, say? Well, now I'm a fan of wrestling. I'm back at it. These guys are doing things I've never heard of. I don't know what an arm drag is. Not. <laughs> You still don't, don't know what an arm drag is. I don't know. I think it's when you take somebody by their arm and drag them across the ring to pin them. Mm -hmm. One, two. How yeah, do we get yeah, into you drag them, right? How do we get into the business? Um, so I kept going to these shows with, with my buddy Evan. and um, Evan Bourne, which a lot of you people out there know as Matt Seidel. Yeah, I, I don't know who that is, so <laughs> I have no you know idea. Matt Seidel. No, I don't think so. Really? What is he? I mean, what, why would I know him? He was the real, he's like real skinny, high flyer guy. He used to do like... So my, it sounds my, like, what, 90% of the guys in the... finish, but he did it with the other leg. You're always worried about people stealing he your stuff. He works in the Fed Didn't now. Didn't the big show steal one of your moves, he too? Stole the of course he did. Yeah. Of course he works did. in the Fed now. <laughs> Evan Bourne. I don't, I don't know. know Matt Sandell. I, maybe if I saw him, but I don't know. I don't know my names. And I'm pretty bad with those names anyway. Well, you're totally coming off, of, uh, off the track here, man. I'm just trying to find out how you got into business. I don't need you dropping names. Well, it was my buddy Evan. We'll just call him Evan. Don't dro stop dropping names first. Of all. Okay. Well, okay. yeah, no. You gotta, so Evan, stop dropping first names, right? <laughs> What am I doing? What is this? The, I don't know, man. The, I don't know. Because you hold him like this, and you ask him a question, and his answer is always, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, I don't let's know. see if he knows how to open this up here. I don't know. Use your head, I don't know, man. Give me that. Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Evan. So, I, Evan and I start going to these shows, and, uh, like, it, it was like, you know, it's that thing where you kind of just like, become more and more involved every time you go. So, by the time, you know, a few shows in, we're helping set up the ring, and then sure. we're... You know, we're uh, helping you guys. You're trying to be buddy buddies. Yeah, man. You're trying to, I mean, they're allowing you to be sort of connected. Yeah. And so it's great. So you, you kind of take advantage of it. Yeah, and in hindsight, they're just using you for work. Absolutely. But they're looking to get you to do anything they can for you for free. Yeah. Like, and then you get the free ticket to the show. And sometimes you wouldn't even get the free ticket. Right. That's how much people are scumbags in this business. So, sure. Sure. Um, but, you know, so that's that's kind of how I got involved. I ended up starting to do, uh, taking pictures ringside, which is cool as hell. I still have Can you bridge, Ricky? Can you bridge? Can show, show me, can you bridge? What, are you Thomas Simpson here? Uh, I just want to see I'm it. sure he wants to see, <laughs> uh, maybe maybe not me now, but a young, a young <laughs> Ricky Landell, he young wants to see bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A young trademark. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're taking photos. We're involved in the business. Started doing started doing some websites for this company, PWF, at the time. That's, that was the company I was going to, by Fusion. the way. Uh, no, PWF was uh, was Steve Carino's company, probably pretty close to after ECW closed. Or was it Fusion? No, it was uh, Premier Premier uh, Premier Wrestling Federation. So it was so one of the thirteen thousand for Federation. One, Steve's one of many of Steve's okay. <laughs> companies. Yeah. Uh, that 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 came and went and came back again and went again and okay. maybe we'll come back one more time. Yep. But um, yeah, and I got involved, and, and one day, you know, long story short. Um, Steve comes up to me and Evan goes, uh, so what are you guys training? Oh, and at the time we brought another one of our friends along too. You know him, as Alex. Alex Law. Alex Law. Um, who's no longer in wrestling, but he's doing great. And he was one, he was the third guy who, yeah. who got involved and he was like, hey, what are you guys going to train? So I'm thinking like, ah, I never even, never even crossed my mind that that would be a possibility. Right. At the time I was pretty young though. I was a decent looking guy. I was in good shape or good enough shape, getting in better shape. And, uh, that's kind of where it went. So you start training then when Steve asks. Yeah, and you know, and it was like at that we would have paid any amount of money to, right? You know, because it was just the coolest thing ever, and we had really come to respect Steve. So, but at the point when you met Steve, you had no idea who he was. Didn't know who he was, but I really got to know who he was and what he does. You grew, you grew an admiration for. Yeah, him. yeah, a lot of appreciation. So, so like, I time, what he was doing. So at the time comes when he's like, "Hey, when are you guys training? Where are you guys training from?" You kind of were like, "Wow." Yeah, this guy wants to train us. He's like, listen, we we can we can train. Here's how we can do it. And, you know, there was a there was a gym out like an Oli 
Ole County, Pennsylvania, so the middle of like cornfields. And uh, and at the time, I was going to school in New Hampshire. So right. this was like, I was like, wow, it's a great opportunity, but I'm going to school. And I've always been someone who kind of made things work. Yeah, or, You know, whatever I was, I, and I was like, you know what, I just got to make this work. So I used to drive six hours from New Hampshire uh, on a Thursday night. I just put all my classes until like Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. I would drive Thursday night down to New Jersey, which is where my you know my family was living at the time, and then um, and then I would drive I'd wake up the next day early and, and then drive down to Pennsylvania, stay in a hotel and uh, and train for the weekend. So when he asks you you know hey when are you gonna train was there any hesitation or was it like I'm doing this let's do it let's let's get in this training? There wasn't so much hesitation. It was just not an understanding of what the hell I was being asked. Okay. Like, uh, I just it wasn't it wasn't. I couldn't comprehend it. Like, why would you want me to train? Do you really see something in me? Like, sure. I just, I never thought I'd be a pro wrestler. So, um, and and we don't have to get into price or anything like that. Cause I, 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 I actually that. got a real good story to tell you related to that. So, well, then let's hit it. Um, because this this goes to the heart of like who Steve is. Okay. Because Steve's, I mean, we all know anybody who knows Steve Steve uh, Carino and has, has gone online and heard the stories and been told a lot of you know a lot of bad things about Steve. Most of it's probably true. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's not, and uh, and he's actually a, you know a great guy in so many ways. And the story I like to tell about that is uh, as you text and ignore. I'm me. listening. No, I'm, I'm booking another guest mm -hmm. on the safe. Mm -hmm. I'm actually yeah. booking one guest on the safe house. As it's like when, it's like when a girl's talking oh. and you just kind of have like three or four words to throw oh. out there as as a response. You see, and I'm not your audience. They're your audience. <laughs> yeah, so but you tell them. Come on, the man. Story. You're supposed to be my friend, though. Tell the story. Well, so the story goes that. Uh, um, you know, so I start training with Steve, and uh, one of the guys doesn't end up making it, and the other guy does, and we I got what basically was called like on the job training, on the road training. I trained for a few times with Steve, and then he's like, "All right, we're on the road," and I was like, "Wow, really? You're ready? I can't believe it." Yeah. We get on the road, and uh, that's how I learn. I'm learning how to work, like just just getting thrown into matches, and just hey, listen to the vet. You know, you know how to, you know the basics of the match. Listen to the vet; he'll get you through the match, and and this is how you're gonna learn. So it was great. I was traveling with Steve, and uh, one day, you know, after a few times traveling, he goes, uh, he's like, you're done paying for training. I'd only paid about three hundred dollars at the time. Wow. Um, wow. And some guys could charge and, and that's three pretty, grand. Probably. And that's the price is knowledge right there. Yeah. Oh, I got the So there. most of your training wasn't learned uh, on a Thursday night for three hours in an empty arena with just you and Steve. It was learned. It was learned in the ring in front of a live crowd. Yeah, listen, I got my ass beat in a, in a gym for a certain amount of time. Right. I mean, we got run down, puke in your buckets, do your squats, do you know, do all the the, the drills, the blow up drills, and and uh, you know, learn learn the business uh, in terms of you know being in the ring. Um, the rest I learned just being on the road, interacting with people. I was always the guy who used to come into a locker room and just ask like the veteran of the locker room, whoever it may be. Can you watch my match for me? Can you let me know what's happening? So this every case, young guy should do this, by the way. You're asking Balls Mahoney to watch your match. Okay, so not every veteran. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I could never ask a guy. With I a, hate you, Balls Mahoney. I could not ask a guy with a dent dug into his head uh, and no teeth to be watching my match. I just that's from lighter fluid, not from drugs. Although I have a soft spot for balls. Uh, my respect level is pretty low. So. Uh, this is just a look at disgust. Are you, are you disgusted by him or by the fact that I have respect like for him? The entire interview is just shut down now because I I, I, I hate you, Balls Mahoney. I think we should do Face Off Volume 15, Kirby Mack and Balls Mahoney. And I won't work you like New Jack. You know, New Jack tried to intimidate me once and make me pull a staple out of his hepatitis infested forehead. It wasn't going to happen. Who was that for uh, Frank Goodman? For Frank Goodman. Of course, it, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> why wouldn't it be? I like Frank. I've had no bad interactions with Frank. I think Frank, Frank's kind of a scumbag, but... You've had bad interactions with him, or you just well, think he's a scumbag? Or he's, he's just a promoter? I think he's a, bad, a, a real bad promoter. I mean, that might be, in, you know, uh, it's an oxymoron. But, uh, <laughs> You're an oxymoron. I think, he's a, I think he's a bad promoter. This is a guy who used to talk about how, um, or still does. I've seen it on Facebook before. He's talking about, oh, you know, like, about who should be working shows and, and what a promoter does and all these theories. And it's like, dude, you're the guy who used to book some kid off the street who could sell 40 tickets. You let him go work a match. What do you mean used to? Oh, oh, is he still doing it? What? Um, so, <laughs> wow. before we get into the fun stuff, let's finish this uh, this little uh, this little chapter. Let me get back real quick. To, yeah, to, let's to, finish to, this, this chapter up. 300 bucks. 300 bucks. And I said, wow. I said, well, 
I said, don't, I, you know, I'm really appreciative. Thank you. I mean, this is amazing. I can't believe it. I don't have to pay the, whatever it was, $1,500 or something to train. And he, and he, and I said, well, why, can you tell me why um, that's the case? And he, go, he proceeded to tell me a story about how, you know, when he, he was just starting out and he was down in Memphis and, uh, and he was, you know, he just, he's, he's got a, a, a wife with a kid on the way and he doesn't know what he's doing with his life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as but, most wrestlers don't. Right. And he's young. Steve's young. He's, like, he's in his early 20s at this point. So he's trying to figure out what to do. And he told me, uh, uh, he, you know, I'm working in Memphis and I, I just, I, I mean, he made no money and I just had to, I was sleeping in my car in the hotel parking lot. Mm-hmm. And he said, a guy named Billy Travis, and you can Google Billy Travis because he was actually a real good worker and uh, apparently had a decent side to him. Uh, saw Steve doing that. He asked, kid, what are you doing? He's like, I don't have any money. I got to sleep in my car. He goes, Come on, kid. He goes and he goes and buys he goes and buys him a hotel room, and uh, it's just that whole kind of paying it forward, paying it back. Kevin uh, Spacey as a oh, I don't even know the reference. That was the actor and paid forward. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, with the kid who wants to uh, pay it forward. Pay it forward. Gotcha. So yeah, there you go. So that's kind of what he did. He, he did it with me. Okay. And I'll never forget it, and I always appreciate it. Absolutely. And I try to do it any way I can. If the opportunity comes, to you. that's that's the way and you, you still do, do even with him and whatever that is. <laughs> well, listen, you know, whatever that is, we we'll, do. We do. We, 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 they listen. You gotta take. There's a song out there, right? Springsteen just came out a song. We take care of our own, right? Yeah. And yeah. whether you love your own or not, you still you still gotta take care of. There's it. another song out there, you know, that totally relates to wrestlers, and it's a. Uh, Glory days. <laughs> no, that's like everyone. <laughs> even when you're in your, even when you're in your, you're at your best. It's still glory days. Right, right. All right. So, let me ask you this then, because you've got, you've got Evan. Did you know that? Did you know that story about uh, Billy Travis? Yeah, yeah, training? I'm pretty sure you told me. Yeah, you, you told I talk me a lot. lot so. you, you told me. No, you tell a lot to me. You don't talk. That's a lot. true. I talk. I talk a lot to you. So you had Evan, Cur- Evan Bourne, Evan Courageous. Sure, whichever Evan you yeah. want to pick. Uh, sure. You had you. And you had uh, Alex Law. Mm-hmm. Now those guys had to pay a full price for training. Uh, I don't think uh, Alex did, and I think and, and the other guy Evan had was was gone at that point. Wasn't so for him, right? Right, okay. right. There's just but I mean, how does that feel? There's three guys though, but you're the one that Steve's like, you're done. You've only given me three hundred bucks, and and Steve, I love you to death, but we all know money's money to you, and you need it, and you well, I'm not gonna say you need it, but I'm gonna say you like it, and you'll take it. Yeah, who does? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks so for thing. So three hundred dollars. When this guy is willing to pay you another two grand, and you're yeah. always saying stop at three hundred, I mean that's an amazing feeling. How's that feel? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's the start of Steve and I having the relationship we had. Yeah, you did, yeah, you absolutely. know, because uh, he just showed a human side that I didn't even realize that most pro wrestlers are like subhuman garbage. Right. I saw a decent right. man in wrestling. I was like, wow, this is freaking great. I can't Who's believe the guy it? with the chili pepper on his penis. That's subhuman garbage. The deep fried turkey. Oh my God, from Michigan. Yeah. Oh please, that's that was that JT, <laughs> JT Wilson or JT, JT doesn't exist something anymore. Something or other. I love that one. Man, I'm I know I'm getting the name wrong. I'm probably insulting somebody actually named JT Wilson. JT Evans. I don't something know. like that. Right. Man. Whatever. Thomas. Right, Thomas so, it's called so the deep fried turkey. So let's fast forward a little. We're in the business. We mm-hmm. see how you got into business. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, you at some point because you were running with Steve. Sort of had a, 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 whether it was a full-time or part-time, but you had a gig in Ring of Honor. Yeah, Steve had a gig in Ring of Honor. Right, right. And I was you just, were there. I was there for doing the young boy stuff, throwing the streamers, you know, getting a spot here or there, and then, you know, getting a little, like, uh, you know, I was sick. And how was the time there? Like, was the dark matches? It, what is dark match, anyway? Right. Was that when, on television. Was that when it was Gabe, was that when it was Gabe, Gabe and Rob? Gabe. Gabe and Rob, yeah. Gabe and, and how was that, how was that time there? Um... It was good, man. It was a great learning experience. I can't say anything really bad about good. them or that experience. It's good. It, and, and they were firing on all cylinders at that point. I don't know where they are now. I, don't, I haven't watched Ring of Honor and since before I, I, I got out of wrestling. And uh, But at that time, they were doing 2,000 people at the Rexplex in Jersey, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And it was, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, it was cool as hell. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and that's, that's when I had uh, Steamboat. Starting to come in too at the time. Now, at what point in your relationship with Carino do you do you get in the mix with uh, with, in my opinion, one of the greatest wrestlers in the business who has never ever, ever 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 got his up and comings. The freaking C- man, the general C. C- Anderson. W. 
Anderson. I oh, love man, you, Steve. I love, I love you, man. At what point do you run into this guy? Uh, well, how could you not? He's like at that time he was. And, and I know and you know this, but I know a lot of you out there don't. Like I, I learned a lesson in respect a very hard way. Um, and and not Did to you take, get your ass kicked by CW? And not to take anything away from this interview because it is about you. I just interject a little bit. Well, let me take a piss from there. I gotta take a piss. So yeah, yeah, right. I learned a little bit about respect a, a hard way. Uh, as you can see, Ricky here. He, Ricky's lost a little bit of weight. Um, hey, go fuck yourself. It's coming. So what happens is Thomas Simpson uh, pays for a seminar from my brother, uh, me. And uh, one of my trainees at the time, his name was Alex Stone, and it was with C.W. Anderson. And now at this time, uh, I, was, I was a young kid, but um, every match that I had was praised by guys in the South. Uh, I was put over. I was put over very big. And when that happens to a guy that's 20, that's at 20, 21, who had a really rough childhood and really rough high school, uh, it, builds your, it builds your ego. So at this point, my, uh, my ego wasn't here, but it was here. I, like, if, if my arm was long enough, it'd be off the screen. So that's where my ego was. Uh, so I'm at this seminar with C.W. Anderson, uh, with an ego taller than the great Kali, and uh, I, I am unaware of this, but Thomas Simpson, hey, nice to have you yeah, back. Yeah, let me, let me get Thomas back to entertaining Simpson, here, because I don't know what you're doing. But Thomas Simpson actually paid C.W. twice the money he requested for the seminar, strictly for the purpose to teach these kids a lesson. Well, Thomas was so, stupid too half the time anyway, but... So, C.W. Anderson, long story short, beat me to death. He kicked me so hard in the back, I bled out of my left ear. It came out and trickled all the way down my face. But at the end of the night, C.W., I'll never forget it, he was hugging me and he was telling me that he loved me and that I did a great job. And from that moment on, it was a bond and relationship with a guy that's just an incredible person. C.W. is one of those guys that if he doesn't like you, he, he does not like, like you. <laughs> that's true, man. But if he likes you... He's going to die for you. Yeah, he's, he's and, great. And that's the thing with C-Dub. So you met up with C-Dub at some point. Yeah, I couldn't. I mean, how could you not? And what was he the and Steve were running right? together for years. Now, does he automatically accept you? No. 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 So he gives you a time. a tough son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. C-Dub, gets a bad reputation. It's actually probably earned for just kind of being a dick. Yeah. But, but, uh, it's, but if what, I mean, what's, it's, what you're not understanding is that C-Dub, you have to earn his respect. So he might come off as a real dick to begin with. But if you earn his respect, he's like super Right, but it's also you. like C-Dub acts the way he does because he really, like he loves the wrestling business. And he is trying his hardest to protect it, to mm -hmm. honor it, and to move it forward. Not bring it backwards like a lot of these crappy guys are doing. Yeah, and if you're getting in the ring with him, uh, or anyone else for that matter, he expects something out of you. Um, so let's take a sidetrack here, and I want you, Ricky Landale, to explain to the people out there... What the what the phrase what you coined ice is <laughs> to ice what does it mean to ice someone that means to knock his ass out <laughs> knock him out when we were working uh, there's, remember that company L A W Law Live Law, Action Wrestling who, I mean how the fuck did these guys not make anything a, a real how big they run? failed I have no idea holy shit. They had the big, the we greatest were just setup. last night. They had the greatest setup. And was yeah, it not like watching WCW Saturday? Yeah, it was. It, it, they had a, they would get four, five, six hundred people. They had the talent. At every show, they had, they had some talented people. I'm not gonna say who it was. I mean, Julio De Niro. And uh, yeah, Julio De Niro. Where's he? <laughs> he's a guy who used to spray Pam all over his body to glisten yeah, up. Yeah, he's pumping gas. Smell like a fucking fried chicken every time you go out there and rub it all over you. Chicken. <laughs> so. But <laughs> say he's pumping gas in Jersey. <laughs> right now you're... <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, listen. So this LAW was, was running, and I worked a couple times, and I was just so impressed with the production value. Fucking great intros. They had a television deal through the Carolinas, right? Yeah, absolutely. They had these great intros. Big set. Four or five, six hundred people that were loud and electric. People were going crazy. <laughs> it just makes me... Buff the stuff? Yeah. Yeah, buff, buff is, is the, the stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Buff. Buff used to walk around that locker room with his damn <laughs> with his damn uh, <laughs> underwear all the way down to his legs, <laughs> and he'd start shimmying around like this and go, top hat. he started coming around like just the top hat and underwear and, and his you know, shit hanging out. And walking around going, hey, nobody gets a leapfrog. That's my move. That's my move as he shimmies around because he can't walk. Like, it's 
So it'd be like, you know, Buff's walking around and, and some Mark comes up and you play the role of the Mark and Buff's walking around and the Mark says, Hey, Buff Bagwell. Say, you gotta say, hey, kid. Uh, come on, hey, let's kid. Try it again. Hey, hey, Buff Bagwell. Hey, kid. Hey, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And then he keeps walking and away. Then, no, no, and then as he starts walking away, you hear, Buff is the stuff. Yeah. Buff is the you know stuff. he's thinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know Buff's thinking that. He's right. Yeah. I <laughs> because am the you, can, stuff. you can see his demeanor change as he's walking away. He's like, like hell. And then the kid says, "Buff is the stuff." Yeah. Picture a grown, grown ass, gassed up dude with a with a I muscle, good muscle right shirt. I look good right now. Yeah, me, no, too. No. me too, brother. Me too. Buff is the stuff. Buff so anyway, the fanny pack, <laughs> zoom back his pants. Let's get back into the the, the uh, coining the phrase to be iced. It's like a mafia. Show. So we do these shows for LAW, and CW was one of their top guys. I mean, they were there. As he is in any company, he yeah, works. as he should be. As Absolutely. he should be. Absolutely. And uh, and you know what? Uh, just to get off sidetrack again, when ECW came back, the horrible, watered down, ridiculously, <coughs> um, uh, oh, disrespectful with Vince, version of Vince McMahon. Yeah, he was the best there. The only good thing that ever came out of that product was the live match with East, with uh, with C.W. Anderson. Uh, and you know what? I can't remember who he worked because the guy didn't make that good of an impression on me, but man, C.W. killed it. Yeah, no, he's, he's listen, he, as he, he always does. He's great, and he was great. And, and then this, just to, just to segue right back into the L.A.W., like how we do this, is like... Uh, that's it, that's how it works. You're like, uh, what is it, Katie Kirk and Matt Lauer type, type deal? Yeah, but you got to be Matt Lauer because I've got a full head of hair and you don't. That's fine, I'll be the man, you be the woman. So, segue back into L.A.W., Oh, excuse me, man. This is making me burp. I thought you made it bad for me. Go ahead. We go, uh, we go to do these shows for LAW, and I said this beautiful setup and everything like that. CW's working. Who is it? Caprice? Caprice, Caprice Coleman. Caprice Coleman. You know him better now as um, Cedric Alexander's tag team partner in Ring of Honor, who goes by the name of Caprice Coleman. Wait a second. I'm sorry. He works for Ring of Honor? Yes. You gotta be fucking shitting me. No, sir. Oh man! Well, I'm glad I haven't watched the product in that long of a time. Wow! Because that's some, that's gotta be oh, unbelievable. Not getting the booking for Nevada. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Yeah, I don't have to worry about yeah. that. I'm just gonna I'm gonna just keep killing your career. That's all. Hey now. So we we go we we go to do these LAW shows. He's, he's working Caprice Ice Coleman as Ice he was man. Known. Caprice Ice Man. Coleman. Yeah, yeah. So he goes uh he goes uh hey listen man you know CW's working in Japan at the time so. The, the, the big time thing in Japan at, at the time and probably still now is just throwing elbows like good strong hard elbows and just, really oh, yeah. just knocking the shit out of your opponent he goes to him he goes listen you know how to throw elbows he says yeah yeah see that no problem I know how to throw elbows and he's like are you sure you know how to throw elbows he says, yeah yeah don't worry about it he's like alright we're going to trade you know we'll do some, some, some elbow trades and Ricky knows because he's listening there he's right there yeah I'm standing there watching yeah, this go down right there and then <laughs> he goes out there here comes here comes a spot where they're gonna throw elbows. CW throws one, boom, nice clean elbow. Here comes Caprice going, boom, right in CW's cheek, <laughs> across the temple. And I see CW do the old, what the hell, kid? <laughs> what the fuck? All right, and he throws one, and then here comes Caprice, going, and he hits him right in the fucking temple here, and and CW's doing Jesus, this fucking kid. He goes, all right, I'm gonna throw one more. He throws it. Caprice hits him right in the jaw. CW winds up and fucking slams this kid right in the right in the right spot, I guess. Cause it, yeah, yeah. See, see. Except the way I remember except it happening, head hit he gets back. hit and he falls like this. No, it was his head first, but I, I didn't want to. I never seen camera. someone's head go straight down on the damn ground. Like he was on his feet. Yeah. Caprice was on his feet and he folded and he landed head first. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> He falls head. He falls head first, it's, and I think it's he like falls. It's like the old Rick. It's like the old Rick Flair bump where he's like, come on. I hey, except Caprice like, had no choice because he was knocked yeah, the yeah, fuck out. Yeah. He was knocked out. So, uh, so, so to add insult to injury, this kid's fucking knocked out here. See now he picks him up like he's like, and, and you know, mind you, see them does this on purpose. He yeah. has. Oh, he's hot. He's hot because he got hit in the temple. So now he's just gonna fuck with him. See him, you know, and, and I he, says, like, he says, "Are you a good kid?" Yeah, yeah, I'm he's good. Fucking, you know, wait the fuck. And he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck it." CW was a was a baseball player. He was drafted. I can't remember who drafted him. He was oh, a Caprice. CW was a great catcher. He goes, he goes to Caprice. He grabs him. He goes to throw this kid off the ropes, and Caprice. Caprice. 
open, does a head first slide into a horn with his cheek, his cheek down, sliding across the canvas. He got, he had fucking mat burn on his face. He was knocked the fuck out the whole time. See, I don't remember how it ends. I know CW just beat his ass and put him down and that was the end. But uh, yeah, so don't fuck with CW Anderson. <laughs> And, and, and if you haven't heard my story with C-Dub, I'll, I'll tell it to you real quickly. But anyway, at the end of that, <laughs> Ricky ended up coining this term, the ice. This yeah. is the ice somebody. Yeah, when, just... when Ice Coleman got knocked the fuck out, he got iced. <laughs> what the hell, kid? And Caprice, you know I love you, man. Me and you are cool. We've always been Oh, cool. me too, man. We're cool. <laughs> we cool even, shit. We, <laughs> we've even been cool after that situation. But looking back, uh, yeah, brother, yeah, give was, me a call. It was so give me a call. funny, and it's still funny. We'll do lunch one day. Actually, see them text me like a week ago and wanted to know if I had it on tape, so I'm trying to find. You know it. why? Because I was hanging, I was talking to him, and he goes, "Man, I think Kirby got that on tape." I'm trying to find it, and if I find it, it will go up on. And YouTube. if anybody else it, finds it, it, it please it send it to one of us. Go up on YouTube. So when you're watching it, like any any other guy that watches it that doesn't know is gonna think, "Wow, man, he's really selling." You know, he was knocked out. He was so knocked out. But my story though, and actually it's on YouTube, and I'm always one to admit my faults. Uh, it's funny though because in what is by far what I feel to be team matches, if not their best, one of their best tag team matches ever, uh, and you talk to Carino, your boy, and you talk to C.W. Anderson, and C.W. says it, this is one of his favorite tag team matches of all time. And to have C.W. say that blows my mind because C.W. has been everywhere, and he's even been in Japan. And to have C.W. Anderson tell me that C.W. Anderson and Steve Carino versus Kirby and T.J. Mack is one of his favorite tag team matches of all time. Man, that is so humbling. That's Iron Sheik break your back humbling. Uh, so this match is on YouTube. The ass yeah. fucking, right? So this match is on YouTube. You can easily find it. It's in two parts. Uh, and what I'm about to tell you is in part two. He's self-promoting so much. What I'm about to tell you is in part two. I learned from you. <laughs> what I'm about to tell you is in part two. Uh, C.W. calls for the backslide. I hope the backslide, but I'm just... I'm just so enamored and, and just everything. It's all just taken in. I'm working for Hermie Sadler. I'm working these TNA house shows. I'm working C.W. Anderson and Steve Carino. And I'm not jobbing out to them. They're letting us go 25 minutes with these guys. So I'm, I'm just not thinking. I hook the backslide and instead of going down like I'm supposed to, I go to my knees first. And then I try to like powerbomb him over me. I totally botch a backslide, right? And you know C.W. He's got the bad neck, right? Oh, yeah. So C.W. goes down on his neck. And it jerks him <laughs> out. He's out. Like a professional, he's <laughs> down for the two count, but he comes up. And we, you know, we split. We always, you always got to have that distance. So we create the distance. I'm supposed to come up for what I feel, what you feel, what everyone in the world knows is the best left punch in the business. But this is the best shoot left punch in the business. Now you go watch this. I come up, I turn around, and all I see is boom, fat, big, bald headed C.W. Anderson. His face is so red. He looks, like, <laughs> he looks like the bull from Looney Tunes. There is steam coming out of his ears. And next thing I know, it's... Motherfucker! Boom! And I collapse. It's... Boom! And it was, <laughs> it was Mike Tyson, Nintendo, KO, knockout. I was gone. Like, that's kind of like when Jack Victory punched me in the face. He knocked me out. Oh, man, that's another story. You remember that shit? I'll tell you what. I gotta take a piss. So this is actually break. Okay. Well, I'll let's take a break, together, then. And then we'll come I'll back. I'll take a piss, too. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's bring the, let's bring them back in and draw their attention um, with uh, Ricky Landell. You can uh, number one, you can start being professional. Put your phone down. Uh, and number two, I'm gonna give you a name, okay? Okay. And I want you to give me uh, whatever you got with it. Do we? First slot, that that kind of thing. Ricky Landell. I'm Joey Sylvia. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Come on, baby. Let me hear it. <laughs> he's just an arrogant, no talent son of a bitch. Really? He he's got no talent? Well, oh, so you know, I can't say that because I never really watched his matches. I wasn't interested, but he was an arrogant little fucker. Very he, arrogant. One of those little Napoleonic fucks. Yeah. Like a, like a damn chihuahua. Like, yip, 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 all over your fucking yeah, legs yeah, yeah, and shit and talk shit the whole time. I remember the. Uh, oh, he was annoying. You would tell me the first interaction you had with him. Where every time he would say something, you would ask him a question and his answer would be like, I'm Joey Sylvia. I'm Joey Sylvia. I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't care. <laughs> none of that matters to me. Yeah. I don't know who you're talking to. Shit. 
Joey Silly. Well, that's that's a not not something I expected to hear. <laughs> no, but I figured that'd be a good segue. That's funny, game. man. All right, so <laughs> let's jump around. He's not a no talent. I, I don't know. I don't know that for. No, I think Joey Silly is very talented. Is uh, he still I, around? I think uh, he's not around as much as he used to be. He had some issues and some falling out with some people's. Uh, Joey, if you want to get on this, really, this shocks me. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, if you want to get on this, hit me up. The seat's empty. Um, yeah, I don't think Joey Sylvia's a no talent. I think Joey Sylvia uh, was very talented, and the problem is, is that he knew it and he wanted to show everybody that, and he let that interfere with what he really. Yeah, did. he wasn't he, humble at all. He flipped, Ever. he flopped, he flew, he did stuff he shouldn't have done, and it never got him where he needed to be. Uh, but who am I to talk? I, I only. Wrestle Ryback and beat him first time. No, I'm just kidding. I anyway, know that is. yes, no way does. Okay, um, so let's jump around here, right? We 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 trained. We met we met Steve. We C-W. met C-Dub. Mm-hmm. And at this point now, we're going to transition into you're going to start get involved with a little promotion, a very unknown promotion. Not many people have heard of this promotion. Uh, it goes by the initials AWA, and that is the American Wrestling Association, run by the Ganya family. How did you get involved with that? That's a bit of a jump, but uh, shit. Yeah, Steve, not much. You know, you know what it was. You know what it was. I think. I think if I remember correctly, Steve was working in in Japan. Um, Dale, Dale Gunn. Um, Dale, Dale Gunner. Hey, <laughs> Dale come to the bachelor party. Dale and, and Johnny Stewart, lustrous Johnny Stewart from actually from the A W A. Uh, they great were, guys. They were, oh yeah, shit. Good times, man. Love them. These guys uh, were running a company under, 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 under AWA, and they were place. doing it successfully for years. Nobody really knew this until you kind of dug into it and realized, wow, oh, holy shit. These until guys Vince are, caught wind and sued the shit out. Well, that was much later, but you're, for, they knew it went for years, years running these shows. They had 3,000 people, huge shows with you know old legends on them and stuff. So I guess what had happened was that uh, Steve was working in Japan, uh, Zero One, uh, which was the promotion he worked for, wanted to have an association with the AWA and its title uh, lineage. So he, they kind of enlisted CW or CW to uh, Steve to be the consigliere or the uh, intermediary between Dale and them. Mm-hmm. And Steve kind of put this together while he was putting that together. Dale at the same time was putting together a bunch of different territories. Throughout the, territory. throughout the country, one time you had over like fifty. It was you know incredible. all about that. You, you're still the damn AWA so late. Late. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty champion. Exactly. And and regardless of how things ended or how things went out, that was really one of the best parts of my career. Oh, it, it was a lot of fun. It was one of the greatest times. We had a lot of fun. It was so fun. So so I remember Steve saying to me, you know, Steve, because Steve always looked out for me. He said, "Listen, man. He's like, you gotta, you gotta. I put you, I put you over to Dale, and uh, you gotta send them your your." Your, you know, your your press kit, your all your information, and at that time I really I had some things, but I didn't have stuff put together. So I needed to like quickly move on this, get some things put together on a DVD, photos and shit, and send it out. So it took me like a week week or two to get it done, and I sent it out. And I just followed up with an email in the day, all saying, "Hey, listen, I'm sorry it took so long, but I sent this out." And he responded, he said, uh, "When I ask for something, me, <laughs> <laughs> damn you, when I, Dale. <laughs> when I ask for something, I know this I expect going. you to do it immediately." Yep. Something along those lines. That's absolutely And I'm thinking, fuck this guy. Yep. Who the fuck is he to talk to anybody like this? He stabbed Psycho Sid with scissors. Shit. <laughs> so he goes, so I said that out. I'm immediately going, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? So I go to Steve and go, what's wrong with this guy? He's like, listen, just, just, you know, the old, uh, you know, you draw more flies with honey than you draw more bees with honey yeah, or whatever. Whatever. Than uh, with shit or whatever. You can't so, make chicken scratch out of chicken chalk. I got you. Yeah, chicken shit or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, chicken scratch. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so that kind of started the uh, the interaction with Dale. What I didn't know is even though he was talking shit, he actually really liked what he saw. And, he saw and that's how Dale is, I feel. And it's kind of like what I said with, with uh, uh, in, in the same regards to Thomas Simpson. If Dale likes what he sees and really feels like there's something there, mm-hmm. Dale's going to give you a hard time. Dale's going to kind of pull your strings and feel you out. Yeah. If Dale thinks you're horrible and doesn't give a crap about you, Dale's not even going to ever think about you again. Yeah. And that's just how he is. That's how Dale kind of um, weeds out the weak, so to speak. Well, and he's got a thing where he's got to have some control. Sure. Yeah, that's and how he absolutely. controls. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. 
so we're just we're just figuring this out. I'm gonna okay. open it still. Well, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. So that was the start of it, and uh, I basically started working with Dale from there and uh, doing the territory stuff. And that's a whole a whole other. I almost feel like a whole other podcast for another day. Like there are so many stories that came out of AWA. Uh, from what I understand, we had met before AWA, correct? You and I? Yes. Oh yeah, man. I worked for Thomas. Right. So um, the first time I ever met you was uh, Alex and I drove well, down. You and Alex, yeah. And uh, we t- I tagged against you and uh, you and TJ. And I remember uh, it's funny because it was the same thing with Aiden Chambers, who was recently he was on the past episode before uh, Ricky. I didn't like him. And I remember I didn't like you, and you didn't like me. There was uh, yeah, there was definitely a little like power struggle. It was a power struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a uh, hey, I'm Thomas's boy, and you're like hey, I'm Steve's boy, and I'm yeah, like yeah. well, screw you, I'm Thomas's boy, and you're like yeah, but you're not hearing me, I'm Steve's boy, and I'm like yeah, but Steve's Thomas's boy, so I like pink. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, was sounds that, like you read along those lines. <laughs> I think that was word for word actually. Yeah, so so once you get into the AWA. You're just working matches, kind of like you were work with work. Well, Dale wanted to do the. I mean, and you probably remember Dale wanted to do the branded talent stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there was well, these. We, brand, were, we were a big part of the brand talent. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't Chase, have anybody really. Actually, brand. Chase and Rance, who's going to be on this soon, was a part of that. I'm sure we'll get into that. He's part. not on house arrest anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. What, what, <laughs> what do you do it from that, Skype? That was a really awkward sound. You know, you don't do it from Skype or something. I mean, I don't know. Wow. I, I'm not gonna, I like Chase. Hey, listen, man. I know there's a. We're at your house here, and there's a. I know there's a school right down the road. He's not allowed to be within a thousand feet or. So Dale was school. doing this branded talent. You better not cut that shit out either. <laughs> I'll, keep, so. I'll keep it in. I'm sorry, Chase. But <laughs> the safe house. It's been widely publicized. The safe house is for me to be safe. It's not for you. Widely publicized, and it's never editing. So <laughs> I apologize. Uh, so Dale's doing the branded talent thing. And what's your first big leap in the AWA? Is it the tag team titles with Steve? God, I don't remember. I mean, I remember going to uh, Michigan. There was a company there in Michigan that was part of the AWA. Uh, Bay City, Michigan. Yeah, remember that guy, guy Brian Madej? Brian Madej. He was the promoter. He's a real fucking scumbag. Uh, tried to pay me in a check written in marker. That wasn't going to happen. On the back of a Monopoly dollar. It's like, just like that kind of shit. <sighs> But we did three shows, I remember, for them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. one was worse than the next until the final one. Were you there for that when we wrestled in the parking lot of a movie theater? No. And there was no chairs? No. So we were calling up Drive Up Wrestling. You drive your car up to the ring and you can sit in the fucking car That's and watch. phenomenal. <laughs> That's just... Only in independent wrestling, and folks. This is like the first time I ever met Dale like face-to-face. And he was kind of a dick to me, but I was like, Hey, listen, man, I really believe in what you're doing here. This is cool. Uh, I'm in. I'm, whatever we need to do. Okay. Um, that's, I'm in. So, so there, there are three particular parts, and, and to be quite, quite, quite honest, um, your time in the AWA, I honestly feel, could fill up three hours worth of content. We had a lot so, of stories, man. So there are three particular ones that come to mind to me that I want to touch on. Uh, let's touch on the first one uh, with, there was an incident with you and Dale and John and John Stewart, where they try to play good cop bad. Cop. <laughs> Let's go into that one. Well, that, that was real early on, and that's before we really knew each other well at all. You know, I was doing the branded talent thing, but kind of, I mean, it wasn't. Well, and, and the branded talent thing for those out there that are listening, it was where like we were independent contractors for AWA, whereas. If the AWA was going to get booked as a company, there was a handful of guys that were always going to work. They're going to represent the company. They're going to represent the company, and that was me. That was uh, that was Ricky. That was Steve Greeno. That was TJ. Uh, and sometimes that was Chasen. That was Larry Zabisco. CW. Uh, I think Keith did a few, Walker. Few deals, CW. Yeah, Keith Walker. So it was like AWA's roster. Whereas, like, if WWE was going to send a, a, a group over to a ruin to do a tour. We were what AWA was going to send over to do representation, so that's what the brand talent was. Yeah, it was so just moving to bring on. credibility to all the all the different all the different territories and, and, and stuff that signed up for it. At the end of the day, because Dale had like fifty um, territories, and one of the things was well, I didn't have to say personality. But. <laughs> well, he had both. At the end of the day, <laughs> that's a nice one. Hate that. Boom. At the end of the Dale. day, uh, he had like fifty territories. Um, and one of the things was you have to book my branded talent and you have to book my champions at least once a year. So yeah. really, at the end of the day, it, all it was was a work to get us paid and more money. And it worked. What the hell? 
Yeah, no, it, it was great. It, it, I need Australia. It, look, it, yeah, there you go. I mean, listen, it, it, it took precedent, and, and AWA bookings always took precedence over always, any other yeah. bookings. So you try to book around them or not. So let's get to the good cop, bad cop situation, which was early on in your AWA. This was, this was in Michigan, and then and what happened was uh, this was <laughs> there's a blizzard. There's a blizzard going on in basically the northeast and part of of the 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 uh, mid, middle of the country. And now, meantime, in the meantime for this show, me, TJ, Thomas, I think uh, Derek Chris Hammer, my partner, and Chris Hammer, we rode, we drove up 15 hours. To the he show. was a real shit in that ride, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we'll get into. That. I remember this story. <laughs> and Chris, caught, Chris Hammer caught a lot of heat for that, but we drove. Uh, we drove all the way up, and the, the best part about that was that was when it was a blizzard, and Thomas was like, well, we're, now we live in, all right, now walk, follow my hand, we live in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and Michigan is up here. Mm -hmm. Now Thomas goes, uh, here's what I want to do, guys. We need to drive down to Atlanta to bypass the weather to go all the way up to Michigan. Now, did you watch that? Let's instantly that. <laughs> I live in Spartanburg. What is this, an air train flight? We need to drive down to Atlanta to drive all the way up to Michigan. Anyway, yeah. So, so you go and make a what a thirteen hour drive uh, into a twenty hour drive. It becomes four days. <laughs> it's like the the movie road trip. Well, shit. Anyway, so you know, so you know, the blizzards happening then. Blizzards happen to us too, and and this show's still going on. And I, I had a flight. I had actually had a flight that time to go out. Um, I said to uh, I said to the promoter, I said, listen, just pay the fifty dollar change fee on the flight, and I'll drive up. Um, because I'm never going to make it. The flight's never going to take off. So you've already paid for the flight, but I'm just willing to drive up anyway. Sure. Even though you paid for it, it there's really no difference. I'm, I'm going to be there, no matter what, right? And you're promoting me. I'm billed. I'm, yeah. I'm billed as the brand just, just, you know, look, I, I have to be there. Help me with my transportation costs, but I, yeah, I, ha I had to be there. That was the whole thing. I had to be there. All these guys were going to be there, and there was no fucking way I was going to make that flight. Sure. It was, it was canceled. Right. So... Uh, I got in the car. I drove through, really through the night, uh, ten hours to go up to Michigan. I get there, I do whatever we got to do. I check in, you know, get to the show at some point, and um, I kind of feel this heat between me and the promoter, but he's not saying anything. He's now, just, at this point, before before Ricky gets there, there's a lot of rumbling going on with the promoter and Dale and Johnny, and I over here kind of, well, I don't know what we're gonna do. Well, it's because they had that office with that big open window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who does Ricky think he is? And Ricky Landale and oh, right. Meanwhile, I'm driving ten hours to make sure I'm there for it. I my belief, and I've never ever missed the show. I've never once missed the show or canceled off of the show. Only that's, that's, the part. that's like three hundred. Go for yourself. That's like three hundred <laughs> like shows, and I never ever ever screwed anyone over, which yeah. I'm pretty yeah. proud of. I mean, yeah, not going to say that. So absolutely, um, I get there. I get taken into a back room. With uh, which is really just a room next to everyone else. It was just an addition to the locker room. And I'm sitting there. It's me. Then the promoter's sitting across from me, and I got Johnny Stewart here and Dale Gagne over here behind the promoter. I'm sitting on my own side of the table, and I'm like, "Oh fuck, what's going on here?" And I get run down by Dale. Of, Who the fuck do you think you are? This guy promoted you. He booked you. He booked the flight. Blah, blah. And finally, and then Johnny's going, "Listen, kid, I know it's it's a, he's." He's like, I know it's so hard, but you gotta understand. Good cop, bad and it's cop. just this—it's this really obvious good cop, bad cop. And I can go, "Whoa!" Everybody, shut the fuck up and calm down for a second here. <laughs> I just drove through ten hours of blizzard to get here. I'm here, and that's one thing I—I I, I honestly, uh, whoa, I almost put the shoot name out there. And that's one thing, honestly, Ricky, that I, <laughs> whoa, slip of the tongue. And that's one thing, honestly, Ricky, that I—I I always credited you uh, to, whether it being um, two days in the business or twenty years in the business. You were always a man about things, and you're always, you, you cut through the BS, and, and wrestling is a lot of BS, and you would just cut through, and you'd be like, look, guys, I drove, I'm here. I mean, Listen, what the hell? You know, the problem is, in pro wrestling, I mean, what the hell, you've got a, you've got a main event in Deltona before you can do it in Daytona. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. you got to be the main event in right. Deltona right. Right. before right. you can right. be the curtain jerker in Daytona. Right, right. You know right. the deal. Right. The land of the so, never so ending airbrush. They're squeezing you down. So, so they're, they're playing this game with me, and, and, and you're right, and I appreciate you saying that. It's like, uh, pro wrestling is filled with these people that, like, all the rules of life that you've ever learned and ever known no longer apply. 
now all this crazy shit is acceptable and this other yeah. stuff isn't, and you just know it to be wrong. And if you don't speak up, you're never gonna. It's the nature of the beast. Just, blah, blah. Yeah, you're just gonna let, you know, it's business is business, it's not personal. That's the biggest crock of shit ever. And Dusty Rhodes said that. Yeah. That's bullshit. Of course it's personal. It's your damn live here. Absolutely. <laughs> what the fuck? Absolutely. So, so uh, they, they do this. I, I, I calm them down. And, but I'm pissed. Now, now I'm just fucking livid that and, they, that and, they and even pulled it's this It's funny way. that you say that the whole business is business thing because recently me and ER were talking about how, you know, uh, stiffing people is a thing because, you know, uh, you tell me you're going to give me $150, okay, I'm counting on $150 to pay my yeah, life no bill. Shit. So now that $150 that I don't have to take out of my personal account to pay my life bill because you're going to give it to me, I can take my daughter out and I go to the show and now you stiff me. So we mentioned that we put Chris Hamrick in the situation, you know, oh, you just stiffed Chris Hamrick $150. So now you just took that money off of his plate to feed his daughter or for him to spend time with his little daughter. But it's, I'm saying it's funny that you yeah. mentioned that because Chris actually listened to the Safe House episode. He sent me a text. Just recently, he's like, hey, man, I really appreciate you sticking up for, for my daughter. And I was like, are you talking about when we were talking about the promoters crapping on you? He's like, yeah. I was like, yeah, well, they don't understand how it really affects people down the chain. Listen, man, I'll be honest with you. You just, you just talked about Chris Hamrick, and we goofed on Chris Hamrick earlier. But I, I actually love Chris Hamrick. Sure, absolutely. And Chris Hamrick's one of the guys that uh, – he's one of two guys that, even though Steve asked me to train, going back to the original story uh, – to train, you know, or if, if I was going to train or, or not, you know, being involved with PWF, Chris Hamrick's one of the, him and Matt Stryker, not Unibrow Stryker, the one who works for Vince now. Okay. Those are the two guys that like really, I looked at and I said, man, I'd like to, I kind of want to be like them in the ring. At least. Right. You know, Chris Hamrick moves in a way I can't move, but I was just so impressed by it. The guy's got incredible ability. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And he absolutely. looks like he's 48 years old and he's probably only 30 yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah. And, but he's doing all these things. And I mean, it was just cool as hell. Diving through the ropes, laying on your ass is one of the toughest things yeah, I ever had that. to watch. And I let alone could imagine doing. I've stolen that bump a couple times and then I said to myself, man, that hurts. Yeah, I like a bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, at this point, you're livid. Good cop, bad cop. I'm livid. And, uh, and I basically, you know, they probably got what they wanted out of me, which was to be mad and go on, put on a great show. And uh, I was wrestling you. Okay. Yep. You and uh, a guy by the name of Nate Matson. Who, oh, the three-way. He worked, got knocked out he, he worked out of Michigan. Nate's one of the fucking best workers out there. Uh, I don't think he's working anymore. He is, just is not he? much. Yeah. Okay, so he's doing a couple of things. He works for his own kind of federation. He, he was great, man. He was just a fucking blast to deal with and, and a really talented guy and a gentleman and uh, we had a three way match that was just off the hook and I come back to the I come back through the curtain and I see Johnny Stewart goes what the fuck was that and I go holy shit what is he talking about I said to put up with this nonsense now I'm going to put up with this you motherfucker who the fuck trained you get your ass over here and he pulls me into like this little like corridor area where no one's around and the door shuts and he goes